warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh to everyone. Uh, let's recite Surah Al Fatihah. Okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I, Professor Dr. Ruslina Osman, uh, welcome you to our class uh, for LIC 7997, Director Research Practicum, uh, Week 6. Alhamdulillah, today we have uh, Dr. Zahila Muhammad Noor, a senior librarian from the information industry as our invited speaker, and uh, Dr. Hafiza, who specializes in IOT as our invited moderator. So the aim of today's talk is to explore research problems from the industrial perspective that may also add to the syllabus and idea for technological uh, advancement. With that, I pass the session to Dr. Hafiz Mansur. Thank you. All right, thank you, Prof. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everyone and Ramadan Mubarak. Hopefully everyone is fresh and ready for our seminar today. Ready? Inshallah. So uh, our seminar today, the title is Research Problems in Information Access and Cataloging Practices. So this seminar is in conjunction with the 30th DLIS anniversary celebration. And today we have our speaker, Dr. Zahila Muhammad Noor, a senior librarian at IIUM. So let me introduce a little bit about our speaker. So she is a library professional with over 16 years of related experience. Um, she's an expert in Arabic cataloging for Arabic and Islamic collections. She also has experience in cataloging Arabic manuscripts and thesis collections. Um, her educational background, she has just um, recently Last year, she obtained her PhD in Library and Information Science from University of Malaya. And she has Master in Library and Information Science from IIUM, and also Bachelor in Islamic and Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. So she has published a number of journal articles and conference proceedings from 2019 and 20, uh, until 2021. Um, her work experience include, um, she's now a liaison librarian for Dar al Hikmah Library, IRUM, um, since 2020 until now. Um, she was a librarian as a manuscript cataloger uh, from 2013 until 2016. And she was a librarian as an Arabic cataloger from 2006 to 2013. We are very fortunate today to have Dr. Zahila to be the speaker. As you can see that her work experience is very much related to the topic. When we do research, the research problem is very important. We want to be solving real problems that exist and relevant, not just for the sake of doing the research, right? So without further ado, um, let's welcome Dr. Zahila to present her talk. Tafandali. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Hafiza and uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Rosina. Okay, uh, first, uh, let me uh, uh, share my screen. Okay, can, uh, can you see my, my, my slide? Yes. Okay, <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Inshallah, today uh, I will share with you uh, uh, research uh, problems in information access and cataloging uh, practices. I'm Zahila Haji Muhammad Noor, a senior librarian uh, from Darul Hikmah Library, IIUM. Okay. Okay. First, all, uh, first of all, let's we look at the the definition of the research problem. So, a research problem is a specific issue, difficulty, contradiction, or gap in knowledge that you will aim to address in your research, and then you might look for practical problems aimed at contributing to change, or theoretical problems aimed at expanding uh, knowledge. So, this is maybe the the, the general definition for the research. Uh, Research a problem. 
Okay. Okay. So, uh, research problem in uh, information access. Okay. So, first, what is an information access? So, information access is the freedom or ability to identify, obtain, and make use of a database or information effectively. And then there are several uh, areas uh, that are related to the information access, which are information retrieval, text mining, machine, machine translation, and text categorization. So uh, this information access also covered on the issue of the copyright, open access, privacy, and uh, security. Okay. Okay, uh, number one, we look at the digital uh, manuscript. Actually, uh, this is uh, my, what we call my topic uh, for my uh, PhD thesis. So, uh, Malay, I'm focusing on the Malay manuscript. So, the Malay manuscript is important source of understanding of the intellectual and literary heritage of the Malays. They are fragile and valuable information from various subjects such as uh, cultural, in history, and also medicine. And then uh, this uh, Malay manuscript is handwritten materials in the Jawi script. Then that's why it is difficult to us to read and understand uh, for the Malay manuscript. Uh, other characteristic of the, uh, the Malay manuscript is uh, they are interlinked, meaning that a similar topic can be found in a different manuscript. Okay. Okay, due to their, uh, their, their, their value, their age, and their uniqueness, uh, the manuscript cannot be made available uh, to the public. So the main objective of digitization is for preservation and provide access to the manuscript. So then there is raised new uh, 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 issue, which is we have limited access to their knowledge content, okay? And then uh, there is no, what we call uh, the, the approach that can, uh, can, uh, what we can, what we call represent the content knowledge of the Malay manuscript. We can only retrieve uh, the Malay manuscript based on their metadata only. For example, we can retrieve based on the title, the author, and also the date when the manuscript is right, written. Okay, this is uh, several uh, issues that are related uh, to the Malay manuscript. Okay. Next, we look at the information uh, access skill. So information access skill uh, of users are uh, uh, uncertain. So maybe we can look at the level of information access skill among uh, undergraduate student, uh, postgraduate student, or uh, maybe uh, the, the level of information access skill among the academician or the researchers. And then uh, they... Uh, our users did not know sometimes how to locate the information in the library. So uh, sometimes they don't know where to get the book, where to get the, the online journal, something like that. And then another thing is uh, our users uh, find uh, the result of catalog searches hard to understand. They don't understand uh, about the result of the, the, the OPEC. For example, they are searching for the book uh, using the OPEC and then uh, the system will give them the information uh, about the status of the book, uh, the, the, the location of the book, and then uh, and then uh, where the book is uh, located. So they don't find it. Sometimes they don't know also uh, the, 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 the rule, uh, the function of the call number itself, okay? So this is uh, an issue now for our users. Uh, another thing is about the uh, the information skill, uh, information access skill for the multilingual uh, users. So we have a multilingual users, and then uh, they 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 cannot access uh, to the information due to the language uh, barriers. And then uh, another thing is about the information uh, literacy class. How effective uh, our informal information literacy class in improving uh, the information uh, access skill for uh, among our users? Okay. Next is about the information uh, seeking behavior. So a uh, different uh, different uh, users, a uh, different background and level of studies of our users have a different information needs. Uh, information needs. So uh, as for example, we may look at the health information seeking behavior. Uh, uh, for example, uh, during this COVID-19, how they search for the information about the COVID-19. And then... <clears throat> 
Uh, another uh, issue is about the information needs and information seeking behavior uh, for, uh, for example, for special group, for example, for disabilities users, uh, law students and IRKHS, what is their information needs and what their information seeking uh, behavior what strategies that they use and what barriers that uh, they face during uh, during uh, information access okay so uh, this one is about the users uh, with uh, disability uh, in uh, um we have about 87 uh, students with uh, disabilities they are a minority in our community they are remain uh, underrepresented in higher education. Uh, so now, how library are uh, concept conceptualizing a uh, disability and uh, and accessibility? So uh, we need more comprehensive understanding of their difficulties and our challenges. Maybe we need to know uh, what devices, equipment, or tools uh, that that can uh, facilitate them in assessing the information in the library. We also can uh, look at the, the, the information needs uh, and the information seeking behavior uh, for the user with uh, disability. All right. Okay. Uh, next is uh, about the uh, the open access. Uh, so here maybe we can look at uh, the, the the progress and the development of uh, open access in the the, the academic uh, libraries. So the open access is not unavoidable. Uh, so they're becoming more widely accepted as a method of scientific uh, publication. So uh, we maybe look can uh, focus on the challenges uh, and benefit uh, this open access uh, to the academic uh, libra libraries. What is the policy framework uh, and then uh, the, the, the guideline. Uh, another issue is about uh, the data sharing uh, practices uh, for primary uh, research uh, data and then about the open sign also uh, another thing is about how to distinguish uh, the predatory uh, journals okay so this is among the issue uh, that related to the uh, open access all right and uh, then uh, about the copyright and the intellectual pro property uh, maybe we can look at the digital copyright protection uh, the infringement of digital works uh, blockchain uh, technology so uh, uh, then we also have an uh, issue on the confusion about the copyright and the publisher uh, policy, uh, especially in uh, institutional uh, repository. Sometimes maybe uh, the lecturer ask a library to make uh, their works open uh, to the to the student or to the user, but uh, they forgot about the their agreement uh, with the publisher. Okay. And then actually, uh, I'm not know uh, more about this uh, information security, but since uh, this uh, topic is related to the information access, so I just share with you about the information uh, security. So the information security is about securing uh, information uh, from unauthorized uh, access. So maybe we can look at the practices, uh, policies, uh, challenges uh, in higher education, and then uh, their importance and the implication uh, to the uh, to the higher education lah. And then uh, what is the role of the end uh, users uh, in the information uh, security? Okay. Okay, uh, lastly, uh, uh, about the fungus and humidity, uh, since our library is closed uh, about uh, two years, almost two years uh, for uh, all users uh, because of the COVID-19. So some of our collection have been uh, attacked by fungus and pests. So many books affected, uh, especially at law collection and also in Islamic collection at level two. Maybe we can look at the factors. Uh, and and uh, another issue is about the inappropriate temperature level uh, in the library. So we need to know about the tools, hardware and technology uh, to overcome uh, this uh, issue. So this is uh, uh, about uh, the information uh, uh, access. Okay. Next, we move to the research problem in uh, cataloging uh, practices. Okay, 
Um, uh, so uh, what is a uh, uh, cataloging? So cataloging is a structured arrangement of the bibliographic details of all the information uh, sources available in a library. It produces an inventory that serves as access point to the library resources. So this is general uh, definition for the cataloging. Nah. Okay, uh, number one, the issue on the enhancing uh, the cataloging uh, practices. Maybe uh, we can look at the, uh, the, the artificial intelligence or automated cataloging system uh, that can minimize uh, human error uh, during the cataloging. And also uh, maybe by this uh, new technology, we can enhance the production and the quality of uh, the catalog. Okay. Another thing is about the bibliographic uh, description uh, standard. Uh, we have a big frame RDA and also RDF. And then a big frame uh, basically is for the mark, mark, mark tag. And then RDA is the accessor for the AACR2. And then all these uh, standards is related to the semantic web, semantic search, and also the uh, linked data. So we need to evaluate uh, its significance and, and the, this uh, and the impact of this new uh, standard uh, to other uh, to our uh, cataloging uh, practices. Uh, what is the benefits and the challenges uh, uh, for this uh, standard uh, to a special format material, for example, for manuscript and uh, a rare book. And then uh, maybe we also we can look at the significant uh, changes uh, to the cataloging uh, practices when we apply this new uh, bibliographic description uh, standard. Another thing is about the ability of uh, bibliographic data to operate on the open web and interoperate with vendors in the bibliographic uh, supply chain. Uh, then some uh, vendors have provided us uh, with their bibliographic data. Lah. Okay. And then uh, this is about the quality. Uh, so uh, the issue on the quality of the metadata and the bibliographic uh, record. So what qualifies as high quality, what we call, uh, what quali qualifies as high quality meta metadata or high quality bibliographic uh, records? And then uh, what is uh, the relationship uh, between a quality and a completeness of the bibliographic records? And then um, uh, maybe uh, another thing is about uh, is an increase in the number and expertise of cataloging staff associated with an increase in the quality of a bibliographic uh, record. Okay, so this is about the uh, the, the quality of the metadata and also the bibliographic uh, records, okay. Uh, and then uh, we look at the new library classification system. Uh, our library have produced a new library classification system, uh, uh, XE or IUM library classification system uh, for knowledge uh, resources on Islam. So. Uh, for this uh, new uh, classification system, uh, we need to, to study on the issues uh, and the challenges uh, by applying this new classification system, uh, the, the strengths and the weaknesses. Maybe also we can look at uh, the, the, the acceptance of uh, this uh, new library classification system from other li libraries locally and internationally. And then the readiness of the outsiders uh, to accept uh, this new library, cl library classification uh, system. Because uh, previously when we, uh, when we catalog uh, uh, Islamic uh, resources, we are using uh, Library of Congress cla classification system but in the library congress classification system we have a limited sometimes limited subject uh, limited call number so that is why uh, there is initiative in uh, in uh, pub publish a new in develop new library classification uh, system okay next uh, this one is uh, on the arabic uh, cataloging so this is among the issue on the arabic uh, cataloging so the the first is about the arabic uh, vocalization as we know that uh, arabic words are pronounced in uh, one, in more than one way for example nuzomim uh, we could pronounce it as nazam or nuzum 
and then uh, uh, mahkamah for example we can uh, pronounce it as uh, mahkamah or uh, muhakkamah so if uh, we we enter the wrong vocalization it will give a different uh, meanings so it, it will affect the searching and uh, the retrieval uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, vocalization is related to transliteration table. We have uh, the, 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 the guideline, uh, we have ELALC romanization uh, table. So maybe we can look at this, uh, this, uh, this table. <laughs> And then uh, for, for, for Arabic uh, cataloging, the most important thing is uh, the, the cataloger must have uh, a knowledge in Arabic, Arabic vocabulary. Not only knowledge in Arabic uh, vocal, vocabulary, uh, the cataloger also must have an uh, expert in the subject, subject expert, okay? We do have uh, the vocalization software, but unfortunately, uh, this is not uh, stable. And sometimes they, they give us a uh, wrong uh, vocalization uh, for the certain, certain words. Okay. And then next is about the Arabic name. Basi basically, for the Arabic name, uh, for the uh, classical uh, works, uh, basically, they have many elements uh, in the name lengthy author's name to show the pride of the author's uh, family. Another thing is uh, about the one author, sometimes they have a uh, various name. They also have a uh, Arab name and also the westernized uh, author's name. And then there is no standard uh, uh, Romanized spelling uh, for the same name. For for example, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, M O H D, Muhammad. And then uh, also Hussein uh, can be uh, vocalized or spelled as Hussein, 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 uh, Hussein. So so this is an issue lah in in the, the uh, catalog, Arabic uh, cataloging. Another thing is about the deviation of Romanized form of Arab names. Uh, they not follow uh, the, the, the standard. For example, Ibnu Ladin Usama, uh, they spell it as Ben Ladin uh, Osama. So they also this an issue. So when we have the issue, so we have a different understanding uh, between users and catalogers. So as a cataloger, we will follow uh, a standard uh, to enter uh, the, the, the name or the word of in Arabic. But uh, our users will search not based on the standard, but they search based on their, 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 their knowledge. Lah. Okay. For example, uh, uh, for the word uh, Muhammad, for example, uh, the cataloger we will follow the standard and we, we spell it on M U H A M M E D Muhammad, and then maybe uh, the, the the user uh, will search by by another spelling Muhammad something like that. So this is an issue lah in the Arabic uh, cataloging. Okay. Alright, uh, so uh, next is about the Arabic cataloger itself. Uh, so maybe we can look at uh, what is the challenges uh, uh, for the in the Arabic uh, as a Arabic cataloger, their experiences, and then what are the the, the competencies and, and the skill is needed uh, to become uh, an Arabic cataloger, and then uh, the the training uh, module uh, needed uh, for the Arabic uh, cataloger. So. Uh, and then uh, about the future Arabic uh, cataloger, uh, what is the role of the Department of Library and Information Science in producing uh, the good Arabic uh, cataloger in the future? Okay, I think uh, that's all uh, from me. Uh, thank you uh, very much. All right. Um, thank you, Dr. Zahila. Uh, Maybe I open the floor for question and answer. Any questions? <laughs> so if there's no question, then maybe uh, I'll start first, okay? Um, uh, I, I, this is something new, this area is something new to me. So uh, looking at uh, the presentation just now, so it opens up my eye. Uh, I can see that there's so many potential research areas that um, 
up there, right? Um, in terms of information access problems, right? Uh, for the different types of disabilities, uh, uh, students with disabilities, I'm sure they um, um, they have different types of disabilities. So this we, we can uh, is there a potential there? Uh, of, because uh, different disability will have different needs, right? Dr. Zaila, any thoughts on that? Okay, uh, actually, uh, we have a, uh, have a meeting with DSU, uh, Disabled Student Unit, uh, at the, uh, in here. So, um, we have um, uh, the, the, the uh, Prof. Rosita said, uh, the, uh, the I don't know, Prof. Rosita said that a different uh, st a student with uh, student disability have different type of disabilities. Okay, for example, uh, for maybe uh, the student will have a, a problem in a vision, so they need a uh, different treatment uh, from the student who have a low vision uh, vision uh, disability or something like that and then they also have um, they also need uh, different equipment and different tools so here uh, in the library we need uh, to study more uh, what uh, their needs and what are the, 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 the what we call the equipment that they need to facilitate them in assessing the information in the library. And, that, and another thing is maybe we need a special information literacy uh, for this uh, student with disability because, for example, if the student have uh, a problem in a hearing, so how can the library can uh, give the services to them? How can library facilitate them in assessing the, the, the information? Okay. All right, thank you. Any yeah. other questions? Warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. Uh, Dr. Hafiza and Dr. Zahila and others. Okay. Uh, with regard to the Malay uh, manuscripts, Okay, uh, are there issues like, you know, multiple copies, for example, uh, you know, which one uh, would be the one selected for, uh, I mean, digitization, okay, and uh, is it like, you know, um, what are the things being done at ISTAC, and then, uh, I mean, it's from ISTAC, right, I mean, the manuscript, or is it? Uh, yes. Library, yeah. So you know, from from ISTEC and then the logistic wise, uh, you know, the care during the logistic, uh, you know, of of the manuscript transferring from uh, ISTEC to our IUM library. So is there any special care? Is there like, uh, you know, any chemical treatment during the, uh, during the, you know, the the transfer or borrowing, yeah. And then uh, I think this is under conservation and preservation, I think, yeah, and also the digitization of that. So if you could share your experience on that one, thank you. Okay, uh, basically uh, the nature, uh, first of all, uh, basically the nature of the manuscript, uh, yes, uh, they have uh, different uh, copies because maybe we have the original one and some, and then uh, their student or their maybe, the copier copied uh, another copy same manuscript but written by other 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 copier lah okay so yes we have that one the issue on that one so uh, basically uh, uh, for how we we describe uh, this uh, manuscript but based on the the information in hand lah so if there is uh, the copier maybe we 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 put we define as this is the copier not the original author okay and then uh, on the issue of the logistic <laughs> uh, okay uh, actually um, uh, uh, previously, uh, during I'm in the digital uh, section in this library, so uh, actually uh, there is no uh, special equipment uh, to transfer from ISTEC uh, to the to the the, the Gomba library. So maybe this is uh, another issue lah in the in the uh, how we handle uh, the 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 manuscript because they are very uh, fragile. That's in the uh, prof. 
Uh, maybe uh, uh, we can relate that to security, right? Because um, you presented one um, one slide on security. So when we talk about security, um, the, the most common security goals that um, we look for is the three, we call it CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So if you can relate that, maybe confidentiality may not be um, that uh, import of importance, but integrity, we, we need to make sure that it's, it's from the original source and also we need to make sure that it's available, right? Yeah. So, so maybe we can relate that to uh, security as well in terms of uh, preserving the um, manuscripts. Yes, yes. <laughs> And uh, I'm very much uh, interested in the um, uh, because my area one I'm I'm into security and also IoT. So uh, talking about uh, preserving the manuscripts in uh, the, the hard copy, right? We want to make sure that uh, it's safe um, in a safe environment, right? So if we are able to use um, some IoT system to make sure that it's in a, a good environment, maybe in terms of humidity, um, the temperature, if we can control that, then that is also an area that we can look into. So, uh, so far we, we don't have any of those in our library. Uh, I think uh because uh all these uh library collection uh, manuscript collection is available at, at the stack because uh and then uh we do have uh the what we call on the pre preservation uh, side lah uh maybe uh, actually uh this manuscript uh. Is secure lah because uh, the the user cannot access to the original uh, manuscript. That is why we 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 what we call we digitize it and make it accessible uh, to the users. And then uh, maybe um, maybe have to look at on that <laughs> issue lah on the security. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Dr. Zahila? Yes. Yeah, all right. Hope uh, you can hear my voice. Um, just uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful sharing for the uh, uh, topic that I will say so many topics uh, you have shared with us just now that perhaps can be a potential topic. Uh, just now you have... Um, showing us the about the XC, right? So um, is there any other library that have a uh, using XC classification? Okay, uh, for the time, uh, currently, uh, I think uh, I'm not sure uh, right now because uh, I think uh, only uh, USIM have uh, bought the, the, the XC in the printed one. Uh, we don't know how the, the progress now, maybe they apply or not uh, this new uh, classification system. But mm. they already uh, buy from us, uh, bought from us uh, this uh, printed version of the XC classification system. I see. Um, so the uh, IIUM, IIUM library also have promoted, I believe this XC to, um, I think to other library, right? Especially yeah. like Islamic library that have a lot of Islamic collection. Yes, yes. We already promoted it. it yeah, because somehow last time I have attended one talk conducted by a librarian, idea librarians about ICSI. Uh, um, you know, like sharing about this ICSI, you know, such a very uh, good initiative by IIUM library lah. I would say it. so. Have I hopefully that uh, Islamic library can you know apply this XC to their library collection to their library system. Yeah, awesome. all right. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much, Dr. Zahila. Okay, uh, Dr. Hafiza, may I add to the XC? 
Okay. Uh, first, insyaAllah, we will have uh, a special session on that and everyone is invited, insyaAllah. We will make the announcement uh, through the through the offices at KICT. And uh, actually, with regard to ICSI, uh, actually, uh, Ziauddin Sardar, okay, Professor Dr. Ziauddin Sardar has embarked on this uh, classification scheme for uh, Islamic uh, collections, okay. And it has been many, many years ago, ever since, you know, at least for sure in the 80s and early 90s, okay. And I think Dr. Zahila might have encountered uh, as well, okay, that classification. It is our, the fundamental, yeah, uh, of our uh, MLIS uh, curriculum when it comes to cataloging, right? We have been using uh, his work. So from that, um, shall I say, uh, initiative, okay, uh, that has major contribution to the world, okay. And uh, we, IUM, uh, has really take the challenge to, uh, to expand it uh, further. So it's a major contribution from our uh, university as far as I could see it. And of course, uh, because Prof Sadar is our, in our circle, okay, as well, uh, for another uh, areas, okay, future studies. So our university has also given him eh, the, the, I mean, given him the ICSI, okay, and hopefully he has the time, okay, uh, to somehow make a comments, okay, and then hopefully we can get valuable comments uh, from him, uh, so that together uh, the researchers and the librarian can improve uh, ICSI. So it's nice, okay. Alhamdulillah, Tan Sri Rector has. Uh, given that as a gift uh, from our uh, university, okay, and I believe that you know once uh, this XC has been circulated and has shown uh, some performance, okay, indicator of success, uh, I think not just here in Malaysia but also in Indonesia, and they can uh, expand it uh, further. So inshallah, we can reserve the rest. Uh, for the next one. Uh, thank you, Dr. Leni and also Dr. Zahila uh, for explaining. Uh, so can I ask uh, one question, another question, Dr. Fiza? Yes, sure, Prof. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> okay. with regards to this uh, Arabic uh, cataloging and also the cataloging practices, okay, uh, how much more uh, is needed in terms of competencies, yeah, of our, I mean, not our, but of the MLIS graduates, regardless from where they graduated, okay, whether uh, this university or that university, okay, but what what else? What latest competency uh, do our, do the MLIS graduates need, okay, in order to really perform uh, with the cataloging and also the Arabic cataloging? Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh. So meaning that the competencies and the skill uh, for the Arabic uh, catalogers. So actually, uh, the most important thing is uh, they must uh, know uh, well versed with, with uh, the Arabic uh, language. And then uh, another thing is uh, <clears throat> this, uh, the catalog also must uh, have a subject expert. Because, uh, because uh, in the Arabic collection, we not only have a collection on a uh, subject on related to Islam, but we also have uh, Arabic uh, language, but in a uh, different subject. For example, we have a book, Arabic book uh, on subject engineering, on subject computer science, and then about the finance. So we need uh, the, 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 catalog, the, the student or the cataloger that have the subject expert. They need to know how to define uh, the subject subject uh, for the certain book, lah, something like that. They need. So what we can say that the subject Experts is very important uh, to the cataloger. And then another thing is another competency is about, uh, for example, for uh, transliteration. Uh, so they must be versed with the ALA uh, LC, uh, transliteration table. So uh, yes, this is very, <laughs> the, the most important thing is about the Arabic languages and then the subject expert uh, for the uh, cataloging. Catalogue. And then uh, as a cataloger also, they need to know uh, about they must be uh, what we call uh, uh, familiar uh, with the tools uh, in, the, in the library. 
for example uh, maybe uh, they must be uh, uh, familiar with the classification system how to uh, how to develop the call number uh, everything but that no there's one lah and then another thing is uh, about the technology so they must know about the technology so how to to use uh, the system at uh, the library uh, system so this is among the the skill and the competency that needed uh, for the arabic uh, cataloger right, thank you dr zaila um hopefully with that uh, input we can improve our syllabus prof <laughs> inshallah all right um any um, any more questions from the floor Yeah. Okay. Since there's no more question, um, is that okay if I end the session, Prof? So, uh, Alhamdulillah. Maybe Dr. Hafiza, sorry. Uh, um, I will take this opportunity. Maybe Dr. Zahila can elaborate further on the fungus one. <laughs> the, the, uh, the one. Yeah, is it? I mean, yes. if how much effort is needed and also what you know what technology or you know i know for sure as dr hafiza mentioned it is uh, the iot okay I, I think that is really uh, an added value okay technological advancement that's our kuliah is you know championing so uh, perhaps you know some other things like you know is it very expensive uh, you know no need for the amount but maybe just a scale <laughs> like you know very very expensive or how much labor is needed you know just just that's my last question yeah thank you uh, okay <laughs> so actually uh, since last year we have an uh, issue on the fungus and also uh, the pest we have what we call i don't know the, the ulat name <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, the fungus is like uh, the, the white color uh, uh, on, the, on the, 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 the cover of the book. And then we have a project uh, to uh, what we call to clean up all the fungus. Uh, in the book, we call uh, our staff from, our, from my uh, section, uh, learning and support uh, section. <sighs> learning support section uh, uh, to, to clean up all the fungus and also the pests. We also uh, have the outsource, uh, what we call a company, uh, come to the library uh, to, I don't know what they call, they, they, uh, there is smoke, <laughs> asap, to sumbu uh, asap, to, to, to the all the book, to, to, to kill uh, all the pests, okay? Uh, the issue is uh, in the library is about the temperature uh, because when uh, we close uh, the library almost two years uh, to the users, so there is no users come in into the library. So maybe uh, when uh, we the 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 the, the aircon uh, will be uh, off, uh, I think there is there is the time when the 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 the, the aircon is uh, uh, off shut off, and then. Uh, when the temperature is not stable and then it become what we call it uh i don't know i don't know i don't know the system <laughs> it become uh lembab lembab so it become uh so the fungus so maybe we need uh the the system uh, that control uh, our temperature level so if the level uh, so it, there will be uh, the temperature that are suitable uh, for for the book okay actually uh, not all book are affected by the the fungus only the book have uh, the hard cover uh, hard cover what we call the for example especially the book that we brought from uh, india so because some some books uh, the the cover is uh, made up from uh, what we call a uh, kulit 
I don't know. Uh, so is uh affected, but the the cover with a uh, new cover uh not affected, but the 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 hard cover book only. So the most important thing is about the 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 system. Uh, the system that can detect our uh apa temperature in the library. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, this is the most important thing lah. How we can uh, make sure the temperature is suitable uh, for our book for our collection. Thank you, Dr. Zaila. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's a very simple system to set up. Uh, we, we we can get our FIP students to do that. Um, just for uh, proof of concept project, right? Um, just a humidity sensor and a temperature sensor that, that would be sufficient. So this is um, a potential project to work on, inshallah. Okay. Any other um, questions or maybe Dr. Zaila want to add in anything? <laughs> Prof? Uh, no, I think that's yeah, that's that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> for once. Uh, sorry, Prof. Uh, may I add? Uh, go on, go on, Dr. Zahila. Go on, Dr. Zahila. Uh, thank you for the sharing. Uh, it's a very good to hear and as a, a, a new some some of us actually knew for the one that you have those information that you have the knowledge that you have shared. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential uh for us to work further. Uh, especially one of them is yeah, it's all if you only will be off offering soon the Arabic cataloging uh course for the next semester. One thing and then this, the potential collaboration with other departments clearly lah, like Dr. Hafiz I mentioned uh just now on the project like we can offer to our FYP students for, from both department, uh, DCS and EIS. Yeah, because yeah, the small things like um, uh, the, the, because for FYP and they, they, they are expecting like uh, straight away development. So this is a very good opportunity for them because all, sometimes in, in other departments, they are actually looking for uh, potential like uh, implement uh, straight away to implement the project, but they are lacking, uh, you know, uh, ideas or maybe real data to work on. So this is a really good opportunities for us, lah. Inshallah. So inshallah, Dr. Zahila, uh, to to for more collaboration in the future. Thank inshallah. you also, Prof. Prof. for inviting Dr. Uh, Dr. Zahila for the session. <laughs> Alright, thank you, Dr. Hafiza. Right. Thank you, Dr. Zahida. Alright. Yeah, I can see uh, Dr. Smarani is also here. He's also into IoT. So, inshallah. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Inshallah, inshallah, we will work together to, to solve this issue, inshallah. Thank you for the, for the problem issue. <laughs> All right. So, um, if there's no more questions, and um, Alhamdulillah, thank you Dr. Zahila for the very informative, informative and very insightful sharing. Um, hopefully this sharing is beneficial to you as much as it has enlightened me to see that there are so many potential areas to work on, inshallah. Uh, before we end, I'd like to share a couple of posters from the Department of NIS. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, 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 can we have Dr. Zaida or Dr. Lini? Do you want to explain about the booster or just display it? Dr. Lini? All right, so. So maybe uh, they want to promote, um, the department would like to promote um, program, Master in Library, uh, information science, right? Uh, we can do that, Dr. Fiza. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a program, okay, Master in Library and Information Science, okay. 
and you know we really aim okay to enable a librarian who would like to uh, you know advance in their career an opportunity to earn a master degree okay we have uh, records here yeah, of achievement uh, where we have uh, library staff coming in and then they uh, pursue our MLIS uh, part-time okay and then as time goes by they graduated okay and alhamdulillah and of course uh, they really uh, have a very good and strong record uh, at our department as well so we also uh, okay uh, encourage okay others you know from the public library uh, etc uh, to come to our department and to pursue the MLIS degree. Uh, it, it is a mixed mode and also coursework uh, only. Okay. And if you have that research, uh, you know, uh, motivation, okay, you can always call the department and then, uh, you know, offer yourself to do a master degree for MLIS by research. And then we have a high demand, yes, for information. <laughs> and this is obvious, especially during the COVID-19, because we need answers, okay? And where to find answers if it's not in the library among those, you know, on the websites of the KKM. And then, uh, yes, we all are friendly team and we really give full support and guide our graduate and ensure that uh, they graduate on time because we have a really well-structured study plan. And bear in mind, we are recognized by JPA and LAN, okay? And we have been here since 1992, and we often have a very high uh, graduate employability, okay? And we are proud of that uh, locally and also internationally. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hafiza. There's also um, another poster here about the career pathways, potential um, career pathways. Um, after your graduation, knowledge manager, librarian, information consultant, information scientist, web content developer, lecturer, document manager, and indexer and abstractor. So there are many um, potentials, uh, inshallah. All right. So um, thanks again to the speaker, Dr. Zahila, and also to all the participants for joining our session today. Um, let's, let's close our session today with Tasbih Kifara and Surah Tul As. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Zahila Hafiza. Okay, Prof. Okay, Dr. Hafiza.